The ground begins to shudder. Something is coming, and whatever it is, it's not happy. Welcome to another episode of Monster of the Week. First things first, I lost all my face stuff in a tragic barbershop accident. We can rebuild. Moving on. But seriously, I'm pretty bummed about it. This week, we're talking about a very weird creature. We're talking about the Malephant. These spiky quasi-elephant outsiders are the guardian fiends of the Nine Hells. We're going to talk about what they can do, some ideas for how you can use them in your game, and some alternate ideas from what's presented in the source books. Speaking of source books, the Malephant is found in the third edition Fiend Folio. There's also a version of the in 2nd edition, but for the purposes of this video, we'll be looking at the one from 3.5. Something I would like to start doing is putting together a basic conversion to 5th edition for the monsters I talk about. So starting today, if you look in the description of this video, you'll find a link to a monster stat block that I've come up with for this monster. Keep in mind this is in no way official or necessarily a balanced conversion, but feel free to use it as a starting point for your own conversion. Now that said, let's get to the good stuff. The Malephant is a powerful fiend. They're around 9 feet tall, humanoid in shape, and weigh approximately approximately 800 pounds. They have enormous hands adorned with huge claws, and they provide an answer to the question, what if elephants were carnivorous? Unfortunately, the answer is horrifying. In addition to their claws, they also have many tiny razor-sharp teeth, and an elephant-like trunk adorned with a long, thin spike. All nightmare fuel aside, their trunks provide them with a very keen sense of smell. They can detect hidden foes and track by mere smell alone. They also have dark vision out to 240 feet, and sight four times better than your average human. It is not easy to hide from these guys. Should you actually engage with a Malephant, be prepared because they have fast healing, which means that they heal at a rate of 2 hit points per round. Should one of these baddies manage to strike an enemy with a claw attack, it can then make a grapple as a free action. If it succeeds on the grapple, it then gets to make an attack with its trunk spike for free, and the target is also grappled. If its target is too far away, the Malephant can use its frenzied charge ability to gain a boost to its movement speed. It gets an extra 15 feet of movement in fact, and in addition to the speed, the hulking beast gets a bonus on its attack. Roll. In 5th edition, I would simply say he has advantage when he's frenzied. If the Malephant is trying to protect someone or something, it can use the defensive stance ability. In doing so, it gets bonuses to its strength, constitution, and armor class. And just to add to its defensive capabilities even more, the Malephant has access to several defensive spells, such as Alarm, Entangle, Baleful Polymorph, and Blade Barrier. All of that seems like pretty standard stuff for a giant monster. However, it does have one final ability that I absolutely love. If an Elephant never forgets, Gets, a Malephant will make sure that you never remember. Several times per day, the Malephant can exhale a cloud of noxious gas in a 10 by 30 foot square. All creatures in that area must make a constitution saving throw. Anyone who succeeds? Totally fine. Anyone who fails is subject to total memory loss. Mechanically, that means the creature loses access to any feats it knows, its proficiency in all abilities is suppressed, and it loses access to all class features. This can turn your powerful wizard into an old dude holding a stick with an IQ of 160. The victim does, however, retain all of its racial abilities. Which makes sense, because they're supposed to be more instinctual than learned. As for how this affects the character, they're unable to know who their friends and enemies are, anything about their past, or even their own name. The victim can make new memories, but every time they rest or fall asleep, those memories vanish. As terrible as it is, this condition can be removed by anything that cures poison, so it typically isn't too harsh in the long run, but in the heat of battle, this is detrimental, and it will really scare your players when they wait around for the effect to wear off and then nothing changes. So, now you know what a Malephant can do, but let's take a minute to talk about why they might be in your game. The Malephant is built to be a guardian. They are often in the service of demon lords or very powerful wizards. If you have such a character in your game, either as a bad guy, a good guy, or even a player, their application should be obvious. They can make a great encounter for your party on the way to fight the big bad boss at the end of the dungeon. Another possible encounter could just be a roaming Malephant. According to the book itself, it's not unlikely to find a Malephant wandering the lower plains if its master has been killed. They are driven by an urge to protect, but with nothing of its own to guard, it's liable to enter the service of a powerful individual who can provide it with the massive amount of food it needs to survive. Your players may simply enter combat upon seeing a Malephant, can't really say I blame them, in which case you should be able to provide them with a pretty interesting fight. However, if one of these characters knows something about these creatures, or just happens to get lucky, they could end up with a very powerful ally on their side. The Malephant can speak both Infernal and Common, so it's not totally unrealistic for it to enter the service of a mortal. Now if you want the Malephant to be more of a focal point of the adventure, you could have the player stumble across a traveler who has no recollection of where 
where they are or why they're there. If the party decides to help this person, it's possible that they'll end up going toe to toe with something more dangerous than a case of amnesia. It's also possible the person they're assisting is not such a great guy after all. Maybe he was a master thief that was attempting to steal from the horde that the Maleficent guards. There's a lot of potential for setup depending on how involved you want this new character to be with your story. It's also very possible that he was just a simple man in the wrong place at the wrong time, in which case this makes a great one-off adventure. When it comes to memory loss, there's tons of room for creativity. One direction you could go in as well is have kind of a mad scientist vibe going on. Perhaps a land known for its ivory trade and abundance of elephants is starting to run out of elephants. Initially, the party will probably think this is due to overhunting and poaching and that kind of thing, but maybe these animals are being collected as specimens by some sort of crazed arcanist. And then when he begins to unleash his abominations on the nearby towns, the party takes notice. I think these monsters are super cool, not only just because they have some neat abilities, but also because of the way they look. When your players see this, they're going to think that thing looks insane. I want to find out more about it. So that's all for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know I love talking about these guys. Hopefully you find a way to use them in your game. And if you do have some plans for the Malephant, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to talk about them some more. If you haven't already subscribed and you like what I do here, please feel free to subscribe. I have a new video every week. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.